to me that EPA and IG have shown that better coordination and communication can help agents. I rise to speak on behalf of H.R. 2615, the Virgin Islands of the United States Centennial Commission Act. Good day and welcome to the first segment of Washington Report with Congresswoman Stacy Plaskett. I'm Congresswoman Stacy Plaskett and I proudly serve as the Virgin Islands Delegate to the U.S. House of Representatives. I decided to host the Washington Report to inform my congressional district on current issues that directly affect the Virgin Islands community. The show's guests will range from political leaders to community activists. This show is all about getting information to you, the constituents. Therefore, I encourage you to email your questions to askstacy at mail.house.gov to have them answered on future shows. Without further ado, I'd like to introduce my first guest, Congresswoman Jennifer Gonzalez Colon. Congresswoman Gonzalez serves as the Puerto Rico Resident Commissioner to the U.S. House of Representatives. The Congresswoman took office in January of this year, but she's no stranger to politics. Before coming to the U.S. House of Representatives, Congresswoman Gonzalez Colon served over 14 years in the Puerto Rico House of Representatives as she was, the first elect she was first elected as one of the youngest members at the age of 25. During her tenure, the Congresswoman has held various positions, including Chair of the House Government Affairs Committee, House Minority Leader, and Speaker of the House. While in the legislature, she played a prominent role in authoring, sponsoring, and passing landmark legislation on veteran services, identity protection, victims' rights, women's rights, voting rights, domestic violence prevention, improving the business environment, lowering utility costs, tax relief, and streamlining government services. Thank you for being with us today, Congresswoman. Thank you. For me, it's a pleasure to be here with you today, and I'm so happy to be <laughs> in your first program. I and, know. This uh, is a good thing. And I know uh, people from the Virgin Islands may feel very proud to have you in Congress. Thank you. Thank you. As Puerto Rico's sole representative in Congress, you have a really large role to play for your people. Um, what are your immediate priorities here in Washington? As you may know, I represent 3.4 million American citizens uh, in Congress, being the sole representative from the islands. We don't have, as you do, uh, two senators, uh, so we got to work together mm -hmm. in many areas. So mostly 90% of my, my time here is dealing with the health care issues that we are facing both not only in the U.S. Virgin Islands and Puerto Rico, but in the whole territories. Uh, of course, the economic development of the island is a, another area that is so important for, for us to have the tools to improve the quality of living and the, the economical situation on the island. The statehood issue that we just have a vote in, in last June of, of this year, when 97 percent of the population voted to become a state. So those are the issues that we're mm -hmm. facing right now, and we, we look forward uh, in this Congress to address those yeah. issues. Congresswoman, as a representative without a vote on the floor, I think you would agree with me that our offices really have to work smarter and more than other offices to really get the type of representation, to make our voices heard, and to be able to negotiate with our um, our uh, other members of Congress. I, Would you agree? I totally agree with you, uh, not just on that. I, I do think that the territories should make a coalition mm -hmm. or, or even a caucus. And the way that you started with me to have an, uh, that kind of working dinner right. and uh, having discussions, not not just in that dinner, we, mm -hmm. we, we have meetings before to discuss many issues that right. we face together. And people may need to know that we are as sisters right. in the Caribbean uh, trying to work a lot of the issues that are part of the same problem. Medicaid is one of those. Exactly. Uh, Medicare, same problem. Uh, Social Security uh, is another problem we got with the supplemental area. Uh, but the economic situation in the Caribbean uh, is the same area that we're facing in the territories of Guam, CNMI, mm -hmm. uh, American Samoa. If we can work that together, I, I know we can be a stronger force. And as you said, we need to work in, the, in our committees. Uh, right. I serve in Veteran Affairs, small business, and uh, natural resources. You serve uh, in the Oversight Committee, mm -hmm. uh, we, we, which got jurisdiction in all our other areas of the federal government. So we need to use our strength and, and our right. uh, capacity to work with a lot of members. And I think the, the most important part is the education. 
Mm -hmm. uh, not all members know what's going on in the islands. Exactly. And and, and the, the problems we face. Yeah. And uh, we just got a report in that last December, uh, the Economical uh, Economical Growth Task Force, Congressional Task Force, and that report in December identified just for Puerto Rico more than 40 federal laws that treat the, the island different. Mm -hmm. And that will happen to the <clears throat> islands too. Definitely. Uh, you know, uh, we've had our working dinner where we invited our chiefs of staff, our legislative directors to work together. And um, when I was walking through the halls the next day, Amata Radawagon, who's the member from American Samoa, was like, hey, we got to get together as well. <clears throat> so I know that you and I have been pushing that the territories need to act as our own delegation, mm -hmm. just as the members of Michigan or the members of New York act as a delegation together because so many of our issues are very similar. When you talked about all the number of federal regulations that don't uh, are not supporting one of the territories. One of the things that I introduced just recently was a piece of legislation that said that um, whenever the word state is used, it includes us, unless they specifically exclude us. Because how many times have you uh, been invited by a member to sign on to a piece of legislation and it doesn't include the territories and it's simply because they forgot to include us? and then we're left out of those types of legislation. So I think that you're correct. We have to really make our voices heard. We need to be much more involved in the process. Um, I use the 4th of July as a means to send a coin to all of the Remember. members <coughs> to alert them that, hey, July 3rd was the emancipation um, of the Virgin Islands. And isn't it curious that it's so close to July 4th, which is the Declaration of Independence? And how do you all believe that we uh, still have do not have representation just as those 13 colonies. And we are having the same thing. Uh, we do celebrate uh, the U.S. citizenship this year. Mm -hmm. uh, so one of the issues that you just brought uh, to this program, and, and I'm happy uh, having this kind of conversation uh, with you publicly, mm -hmm. is that I reach out uh, Amata from uh, Amata Rade Wagon from American Samoa because we work together in some of the committee. We, we serve together. And we should have that kind of uh, uh, meeting with all the territories exactly. uh, in, in a regular basis sure. because we, we are facing the same problems. That bill that you presented uh, to include the territories is so important. Mm -hmm. Right now, we are not just even included when the census or the statistics from every federal offices are, are making a survey. Uh, if they are not included in the territories, we are excluded, excluded for, for any funding. consideration mm -hmm. for funding. Uh, and it's more difficult <coughs> for Mm -hmm. Each of us to make those questions, to make those sure. uh, pleas in, 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 in the committees, then having, in having the, it done on the front in end. In the first right. place. Well, I know this is a really difficult issue that Puerto Rico is going through in all of the territories. Um, <coughs> you have been working through, Puerto Rico has been working through a financial crisis. Yes. What are the thoughts that you have about how Puerto Rico got there and your thoughts to the other territories or what should be done? and how Congress has treated the Puerto Rico in, in working through this crisis. This is in. a very complicated area. This mm -hmm. is a very complicated uh, question because this, this is not just uh, uh, a matter of a few years ago. Uh, this is the history of the territories. In, in our case, the history of, of the island. Uh, when you are not receiving the same amount of federal funds in many of the federal programs like Medicaid, Medicare, even transportation, construction, education, you have the state have to provide or the, uh, the territorial government have to provide those funds from their own coffers. Mm -hmm. And that will mean that in case of Medicaid, for mm -hmm. an example, before the perfect be, be, example. Before of the ACA, we received 50% uh, of the FMAP, the Federal mm -hmm. Assistant Medicaid uh, uh, program. Uh, that means that the state have to put the rest of the amount of money. After the ACA, it was 55%. We're still behind uh, right. a lot of the states. Actually, so there are other states who have 80% that they're of funding for Medicaid that they're receiving from the federal government. Mississippi is the <clears throat> poorest uh, state. I mean, mm -hmm. they, they got a lot of people living under the poverty level. Uh, but in the case of the territories, mm -hmm. there's, there's, here's the catch. We got a dollar cap. Mm -hmm. So once you reach that dollar cap, uh, the federal government is not going to reimburse any, any any money to that territory. In, in Even our, if you have people who still meet the qualifications under the federal guidelines. In our case, it's $335 million. 
I don't know, uh, your case is... It's, it's quite a bit lower. It's lower, but of course, because our economy of the, 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 mm -hmm. uh, of the uh, quantitative uh, amount of people. Uh, but the problem is that index is about the cost of index. Uh, but as we have a cap, mm -hmm. the rest of the money that is needed to provide those services, the state is going to put it. It's right. not the federal government. So I've always given people the example when I talk about Puerto Rico as a parent, right? Uh, your child is sick and you have to take them to the hospital, they need to go to the emergency room, and you don't have any money. What do you do? You take out a credit card, if you have one, to make sure that your child is healthy. And you're gonna worry on the back end about paying that credit card. That's what Puerto Rico and many of the territories have done, is we borrowed money to take care of the, the basic necessities and livelihood of the people back home. Not only the emergency, okay but also uh, providing for matching funds mm -hmm. to acquire federal funds. Mm -hmm. Most of the federal funds programs need to have uh, matching funds for, uh, for the territories. If you don't have that, you will never access those funds. So the, the way of the territory is working with that is using that credit card. Mm -hmm. uh, in our case, it's the using bond the, the, bond, the, the, the bond markets. And the problem with that is adding that problem to transportation, construction, Medicaid, Medicaid, uh, of course, mismanagement, a lot of expending. Mm -hmm. So th there's a lot of things going on. Uh, we got this kind of a debt. Mm -hmm. And uh, right now, the Congress approved uh, last year a bill, uh, a law pr called PROMESA. Mm -hmm. um, members thought that they solved the problem of the economical uh, situation of the island. Actually, this is the only territory or the only state of the nation that got an uh, oversight board right. uh, of the government. <clears throat> so they even approve. Uh, the budget, uh, the state legislature proposed a, uh, a budget, but the oversight board, board has to approve it. it. it they, they got the final word on that. But what I think is also really important for people to know that uh, many were not aware of is that Puerto Rico didn't get any additional money from the federal government by PROMESA. They've just been given Zero. additional time to pay Wall Street it was, it was, it, was it was May 1st, mm. uh, the, uh, the due date to make negotiations, uh, uh, consensual negotiations with the bondholders. Uh, when we tried to reach in a lot of, uh, of those uh, different agreements with different corporations, that never happened. So right now, uh, the oversight board recommended to have a Title III, which is a kind of a bankruptcy uh, mm -hmm. procedure, uh, to pretty much of, of the debt of the island. So that process is, uh, running right now in, in the federal courts in, in the island, but we still need the right. tools to manage our situation. The local government is, make, is making their part, cutting expenses, uh, uh, cutting the, the agencies. We used to have 136. We're trying to go to 42 agencies. Uh, in the Medicaid, we are changing our state plan. We're cutting six, $600 million uh, in expenses in, in the drugs area and other services. So we're trying really hard to make that to meet the end. So this Puerto Rico is doing what it can. What should the federal government be doing? What should you and I be fighting for here in Washington to support Puerto Rico and, and the other territories? And, and this is a problem mm. that all the territories will face mm -hmm. uh, later on. And I think, first of all, we should be included in any measure to to reform the health care bill. Right. Uh, we we can be you know, providing every year, asking for money, like a band-aid, uh, to have more money for the, I will tell you this, we just got uh, $296 million uh, in the omnibus from this, this year to mm -hmm. the Medicaid. That will take us to April of the next year. But that was money that was already put aside. Exactly. And was waiting no, for you. The, so it's not like they're giving you there new were, money. It was allocated. <clears throat> but the problem is, we're still facing the short, uh, the, the cliff from April to September. Right. So. Are, are, the territories have to continue come to Congress and ask for money. Well, we should be included in whatever whatever provision permanently. Right. And, and that's so we have a bill. Mm -hmm. I've um, that's authored your, a bill exactly. that you have been an original co-sponsor with, exactly. along with all of the other territories. And now we have over 30 co-sponsors mm -hmm. of the bill, individuals in the Republican as well as the Democratic side, which is to create parity or equality in the territories related to health care because we know that that is such a large number and a large part of the disparity that the territories Actually, are receiving. Actually, that, I think that's 
the major issue we face in the territories right now, and, and it's taking me the most part, 90% I mean, of my time right. here, uh, the health care. that happen? In, <coughs> in the case of Puerto Rico, we got Medicare Part B. Mm -hmm. We are not even included automatically in Medicare Part B. Uh, so we have having uh, same, same problems if we don't address that issue. So right. that bill is so important, and right. that's the reason of the letter we sent uh, together. And, mm -hmm. and I, I, I want to thank you for, for that leadership. And we've been uh, signing letters uh, to colleagues, to HHS, to CMS, at the beginning of the year. Right. And, and I thank Trying you to make for them your, aware. Yeah, and I, I want to yeah. thank you for joining me in those efforts. And and the bills that I've been filing mm -hmm. uh, the rum industry. Exactly. Uh, to create permanency in the rum coverover so that we can budget properly the money that we are going to be getting from this. That money. was already, it was an extender, so it, it got. Uh, uh, in last December, uh, it, it expired. Mm -hmm. So we're still working every year mm -hmm. when we should be working uh, in other issues uh, in a permanent way. Well, we have a large number of individuals in the Virgin Islands who are of Puerto Rican descent. Um, on the island where I live, St. Croix, you know, you can be either considered a Puerto Cruzian or a Cruzian Rican, you told depending me that, on yes. what your orientation is. But we are really been watching and um, with great expectation uh, about your issue, your fight for statehood. Mm -hmm. So I know that you're a real champion in that area, and I was hoping you could tell us why you came to that position of statehood versus independence or commonwealth, and what do you, where do you see that fight going in the next? And this is a long fight mm -hmm. from from the people from the island. We, as you are, we are U.S. citizens since 1898 when the U.S. invaded uh, the island during the Spanish-American War. And since then, we've been uh, struggling to solve our political situation. We want to become a state. So in 2012, we got a plebiscite, and 61% of our population voted uh, to become a part of the union as a state. And we just, Congress uh, allocated $2.5 million to have another plebiscite to ratify uh, <laughs> that, that vote. And that happens with the territories every time. So you got a lot of uh, a federal task force from the White House, Clinton, Bush, uh, Obama administration, even uh, Bush senior administration, everyone got a task force regarding the Puerto Rico status. And in June 11, we just got another plebiscite mm -hmm. with 97% of the people who voted, voted for statehood. So what we're going to do, we just file a bill in January of this year using the, the, the results of uh, 2012. Uh, asking to become a state of, uh, of the union, and we're going to be filing another bill uh, with members from the Democratic side mm -hmm. and the Republican side <clears throat> to make that transition process. Why is this so important? People, in the last three or four years, more than 400,000 Puerto Ricans left the island. They're not going to Cuba. They're not going to Venezuela. They're going to Florida, Texas, and, uh, and the mainland uh, to improve the quality of their lives. Mm -hmm. We don't want to live. We want to stay, we want to remain in the islands, sure. but we want to have the tools uh, to make our economy better, to make our, our, our better opportunities uh, in the island. And, and we got more than 250,000 people who serve in the military forces, mm -hmm. but they can vote for the commander in chief. Mm -hmm. uh, they don't even receive the same treatment in the tracker sure, crime because definitely. we don't qualify <coughs> because of our zip code. Uh, those are the things that equality means statehood for sure. us and, and, and that's a fight, that's a quest we've been fighting for so long and I think this is the time to make that happen. You know I was talking to uh, some of the colleagues on your side of the aisle on the Republican side and talking to them trying to get a sense of how they feel about statehood and just a couple of them told me that they were very interested in it they're just hoping that the vote comes after their primaries. <laughs> that's, that that, that, that's, very, good, that's a good input. That they would be very uh, supportive of that. And I know that um, you have uh, the majority of Democrats are very much in favor uh, of th that this as well. Is, this is an issue of civil rights. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is, a, th this is an issue of equality. Uh, people from Puerto Rico and even the Virgin Islands, they just move to a state and they can right. vote there. Right. Uh, why you uh, want to have people suffering? Uh, mm -hmm. the lack of access to health care, the lack of access to better and services, mm -hmm. the lack of access to opportunities, to educational opportunities. That's what's happening in the island. Sure. And, and we just want to improve and, and do it better. And, and, and that's what statehood means for us. We will fight for that. We want to have not just the benefits, but also 
uh, to comply with, with federal laws. You know, um, I tell people all the time that Virgin Islanders, when we became citizens in 1927, 10 years after we were purchased, we petitioned Congress to also be included in the draft because we wanted the responsibility along with the privileges of being an American citizen. And we very much want our young people to stay. That's why I'm really in engaged in economic development, as I know you are, because we want to reverse our brain drain. The best and our brightest go away to school, and there are no jobs for them to come home to. Um, and that's and a, I think that's a main problem we're facing, the, yes. bra the brain drain right now. We're losing a doctor per day mm -hmm. in our island, and that's been happening in the last three to four years. Uh, so at this at its uh, pace, we're going to lose a lot of uh, physicians and a lot of specialists in the healthcare services. And and that will, I mean, right now, our people in Puerto Rico are paying per patient per month 165 mm -hmm. Medicaid. If you go to the mainland, it's, it's 439. Mm -hmm. So it's the double uh, the amount of money you may need. So it's cheaper to the United States to allocate that money in the island sure. and, 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 and take and take care of the American citizens living there. You know, um, we, you talked about the territories working together. And uh, in my discussion with Speaker Ryan um, a couple of months ago, I mentioned to him that, listen, what is happening in Puerto Rico is going to happen in the, the Virgin Islands, American Samoa, Northern Marianas, and eventually Guam as well. Mm -hmm. What needs, I think Congress needs to consider is, uh, as Congress has the constitutional responsibility of the territories, is to consider spending a select committee on the territories to really go over the issues that are relevant to them. I know that you are also looking at other avenues for us to be working together and have discussions. Um, what do you think are some of the other ways that we can work Actually, together? Actually, uh, that's <clears throat> one of the great idea. The, the uh, Speaker of the House just appointed a task force uh, regarding the federal government and the local governments uh, in, in the federal level. I'm one of those appointees mm -hmm. in, in that task force, and I will take care of including the territories yeah. uh, in that discussion, and it's a nationwide discussion. The other way is that uh, not only the Natural Resources Committee, which mm -hmm. have jurisdiction for most of the territories, mm -hmm. not not Puerto Rico in the Interior Department, but yes, in, in, in mm -hmm. the rest of the territories. Uh, we just not only work, work together, but create the awareness of the situation we're, we're facing. We've got many bills, but we need to educate. And, and that's one of the reasons I'm, I'm creating an economical uh, growth calculus from, from, for Puerto Rico. And right now we just got uh, Sean Duffy, Jose Serrano, uh, Darren Soto, and mm -hmm. even Tom MacArthur who were part of the original task force regarding mm -hmm. the island to create that awareness and to take in place the recommendation that the task force made. Why are those recommendations so important? That report is so important that, because that will open the door mm -hmm. for the rest of the territories to solve most of the problems mm -hmm. we got. Uh, so I will ask you to be my honoree, a part of that committee, uh, you know, the there. caucus, because I know you, you can contribute a lot yeah. in terms of what's going on in the Virgin Islands. Mm -hmm. We're Caribbean. I mean, mm -hmm. we, we, we face almost the same problems with trafficking, drugs, uh, yes. health care, economic development of, of our two islands. And uh, people who are living in St. Croix, St. Thomas, they're traveling uh, to Puerto Rico. Mm -hmm. One of the bills that I'm going to be filing, uh, even, to, even today or maybe tomorrow, is going to have an air cargo hub mm -hmm. in the island. Why is that so important? Alaska got an air cargo hub, uh, and, and that will that will trigger a lot of passengers coming to the Caribbean, using Puerto Rico and the Caribbean as a spot, not just to air cargo, to, to passengers and to have economical growth in the island. And that will have a direct impact in, in the St. Thomas and, sure. and, and St. Croix. Um, those kind of bills can be made. Mm -hmm. Those are called the Stephen Amendments right. uh, that were made in Alaska, and, and we should take advantage of those uh, kind of provisions. And we can mention that. We can mention the rum cover over. Mm -hmm. We can mention the small mm -hmm. business um, bills that I presented with a few members of both sides of the aisle that will promote small businesses in, in, sure. in the island. We can include the, 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 the Virgin Islands. So we need to have the tools. Right. I know once we got it, we will make that happen. I mean, I've done things like uh, I introduced a bill called Hire a Hero, mm -hmm. which is to give small businesses tax credits for hiring National Guard, Ready Reserve, because we know that we have such a large preponderance of those in our yes. islands, and small businesses want to do the right thing, but it's difficult. 
So one of my last questions to you is, um, where do you see yourself and your islands five years from now? I'm going to see me here. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to be... God uh, willing, and the, yeah, and the course, people of the Virgin of, of, of Puerto Rico agree. Yeah, and uh, we'll pray for that. Uh, there's a lot of things to, to be uh, made, uh, to be done. There's a lot of problems in our island, and uh, I feel happy to, to have that kind of... Uh, mandate in the last election. I was the most bo most voted elected official in, in the island in the last election. And you just got a really good report card from the people a couple of a month or so Yes, ago. You, you remember. You, you and, and you know what, Stacy? I want to thank you mm -hmm. uh, because you, you, you've been very um, helpful and, and also uh, fighting for the Virgin Islands. Mm -hmm. I think that the joint venture we can do together mm -hmm. uh, to Virgin Islands, to Puerto Rico, we can help the Caribbean to, to improve Definitely. the quality of life. And uh, even having this program right. to, to let, let know your people, your constituents, what you're doing and, right. and, and all the bills you've been presenting and mm -hmm. all your work here, it's, it's a good it's a good uh, it's a good manner to uh, establish the difference uh, yeah. communicating uh, what's going on well you know your friendship Jennifer has meant a lot to me um, and we share a passion for the people of the Caribbean and for the people that we represent uh, I love listening to you and seeing your energy here in the house actually I'm going to be in, <coughs> in, in the Virgin Islands during the August recess and uh, no in October during okay. the day oh, yes so we have been in, you have been invited to be the person who is going to be doing uh, the Grand Marshal for the VI Puerto Rican friendship and you and I are going to have a really good time on Sincore, I'm going to be sure. And I hope we can have the background Caribbean music. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, Representative Gonzalez Colon, I want to thank you so much for being a mem uh, on the show. Uh, you're welcome back anytime, and um, God bless you and Puerto Rico. Thank you, and thank you, Stacy. And the Virgin Islands may feel very proud of having you thank in Congress. Thank you. So, I always want to leave with one last word from myself, and this is something from an op ed that I wrote not that long ago. Disenfranchisement in the territories was originally a temporary step on the path towards statehood, but it has become a means to maintain the doctrine established by the Plessy v. Ferguson era Supreme Court of separate and unequal status for the overseas territories. A federal appeals court decision, the Obama administration brief in Tue v. United States, Congress's unwillingness to grant equal treatment requests made by territorial representatives all uphold that unequal status. As a consequence, this disparate treatment, the Virgin Islands and other territories do not receive the same proportion of support in federal dollars as do the states for school funding, roads, and health care. The federal government matches 14 cents for every dollar of territorial funds, but 30 cents to every dollar in other state funds. In 1917, Virgin Islanders came to Washington to petition not only for citizenship, but also the responsibilities thereof, demanding to be included in the draft committing our sons to defend this country. This tradition of patriotism continues today, with Virgin Islanders giving the ultimate sacrifice in military conflict at three times the national average. These brave service members fight for a commander-in-chief they do not elect and protect the ideals of a nation that are not fully extended to them and their families. Our territorial status is eerily similar to the status of the original 13 colonies. The colonists we commemorate every year revolted and wrote the Declaration of Independence because they were controlled by a government in which they held no representation. Today, territorial residents face the same treatment. How can we herald the actions of our founding fathers while simultaneously depriving fellow Americans of the same rights those founding fathers fought so hard to achieve? Just as the colonialists, we are subjected to the laws of an unrepresentational government. But just as the colonialists, we will not stop fighting for the same representation that every great American enjoys. A people who have made great contributions to this country, in Virgin Islanders, including Alexander Hamilton, Denmark Vesey, and even Tim Duncan, still do not have equal citizenship. Democracy is not complete. I would love to hear from you, my constituents, also. If you have any questions, again, please send those questions and email them to askstacy at mail.house.gov. Please follow me on social media and check out our website for further information regarding activities here in Washington, D.C. and back home in the Virgin Islands. Um, until next time, God bless, take care, and peace.